Okay, the PSEI continued its rally last week and is on a six-day win streak before it hit resistance last Friday. Will this rally continue this week? Let's discuss. My name is Dan Slim and welcome to another episode of Monday Market Outlook. A surprise announcement by Governor Remolona signaling a possible unscheduled rate hike before the November BSP meeting. Now, with the recent dollar rally and a potential inflation print next week, the BSP may be forced to hike rates to help tame the situation. Ideally, the Philippines needs to maintain a 100 basis point spread between the local and U.S. rates. We are currently holding at a 75 basis point spread. So the U.S. interest rates are at 5.5 and we are at 6.25. So what happened here when the BSP let U.S. rates catch up too close to Philippine interest rates here? We saw a big spike in the peso that almost shot up to 60 pesos. This caused inflation to go up to its highest levels at the start of 2023. Now, with the threat of another 25 basis points rate hike by the Fed, either this November or December, there's a chance that this can put the peso back at the 60 level if the BSP doesn't react. But currently, the dollar has rallied to 106.8 before settling at 106. But this could be a temporary pause before its next upward move towards 107. So as of last week, the dollar is already on an 11th week winning streak, closing the week at 106.17. If we look at the past win streaks, the third quarter of 2023 is the second longest win streak since the fourth quarter of 2014 with 12 Week. So far, despite the recent dollar rally, the peso has managed to consolidate and stay below 57. How long can we keep this up is uh, anybody's guess. But remember that the US 10-year yields are already at uncharted territory, way, way past our safe level at 436. So hopefully this rejection candle here could signal some kind of a reversal back to 4.36. Looking at the two-year yields, though the two-year yields have managed to stay below our critical level at 5.11, this could just be a temporary pullback. Let's see how it reacts when it touches this trend line. But so far, if we look at the PSEI, this, despite the negative news, the PSEI picked up steam last week. We were looking out for this resistance level here at 61.50. And the index broke out convincingly, uh, overcoming, actually overcoming a couple of resistance points. One, two, to hit our favorite zone 6375 so we know that this level was a very strong support for us could this be a strong resistance level this time around but with this kind of momentum we are and we are not yet at overbought levels could we also co overcome 6375 usually six green positive candles here followed by a red candle pullback could give FOMO traders an opportunity to come in and this could signal a series of, usually this signals a series of another 3 to 6 positive candles. So does this mean that uh, we are headed towards 6,500 in the next few days? Exciting times. For this week, we may see a retest of 6,250 here. If we continue to rally and take the highs right here, we could then potentially see 6,500. So coming into October, if we look at some seasonality trends and see how the past four quarters have done, let's uh, look at the three-month charts here. Uh, last October in 2022 is a green candle, right? This is 2021. This is 2020, right? And this is 2019. And another here at 2018. So the past five years, we've had very positive fourth quarter numbers. So hopefully we could see a potential fourth quarter rally 
for the PSEI. The market could react to any rate hike announcement this week. So watch out for the inflation data due on either October 4 or 5. So for the past couple of episodes, we've uh, been doing some early Christmas shopping. Congratulations if you were also able to do yours. So far, we've had some good reactions. BDO bouncing off of our 129 buy zone here. BPI also doing good so far. MBT also bouncing off of our 52 buy zone here. Of course, this could be a reaction towards the possible rate hike by the BSP. A uh, nice rally on AP, as we mentioned, this could be a reversal candle and we bought some shares on this zone. So congratulations. We've had a big pullback here. Could this be a good opportunity to buy the dip? Now let's look at JFC with a nice bounce at 225. I was uh, looking forward to buying at 2012. So far, we have a good bounce here. And if we look at the weekly charts, we have a nice ascending triangle here as pointed out by John Michael. So thank you for pointing this out. But at this point, we still need to see a couple of things happen here. We still need to see price action confirmed, uh, trend line support and bounce off towards 237 and eventually make its way towards 260 at which point could we be poised for a breakout at 260 this time let's look at some fundamentals rice prices are up the dxy is also up and if we take a quick look at cattle prices they are actually at an all-time high consolidating here at 100 around 186 we will see we'll know more when they report their q2 earnings no but uh, the only stock so far the only stock i picked up last week was a read as mentioned after the dividend x date we can take advantage of this dip here and buy at 32 where the yield is around 6.5 percent so far, we should have done most of our shopping in the last two weeks. We should now sit back and enjoy the rally. So on to the global markets, the next hot topic for the U.S. economy right now is the potential government shutdown if Congress and Senate can't agree on a path forward by October 1. Now, how will the government shutdown affect the markets? Not much, really. The U.S. has had 20 government shutdowns, the last shutdown in 2019 during the Trump administration. So this is really nothing new. But the combination of the union auto workers strike and the start of the student loan repayment could move the needle in the markets. Now, remember that the student loans were suspended for three years because of the pandemic during the Trump administration. That is going to expire also on October 1. And efforts by the Biden administration for student loan cancellations have been met with strong resistance from the Republicans, was blocked by the Supreme Court just this June. So student loan repayments will resume on October 1. And looking at the economic numbers, we we are seeing a bit of a slowdown, consumer confidence down, GDP on track, but the price index is down. And of course, the favorite indicator of the Fed, the core PCE index, down at 0.1% month on month below the 0.2 expectations. This is good news for the Fed because this is the lowest reading since November of 2020. Could the Fed be seeing some inflation relief? With the economy starting to show some signs of weakness and a possible reduction in spending after the resumption of student loan payments, could this make a case for a more dovish Fed in their November and September meetings? But for now, let's look at the S&P 500 charts. So the index did touch a very important zone here at 4,250. This was where we expected the bulls to come in given the confluence of support at this level so we have a major rejection on this demand zone here and the week ended with an indecision candle settling down a little bit below 4300 so as we end october let's quickly go back to our historical data for the s p 500 if we look at the years comparing the first and second half of september in the years when the first half of september were negative how did the second half of September do? We tend to see the second half of September also negative, And this was no exception 
for this year as the S&P 500 was down 5.5%. So as we wrap up our tracking of the 70-year September performance of the S&P 500, again, September 2023 was no different. And look at how closely our September performance tracked the historical Septembers. No? Up to the spikes. Spike 1, 2, and the spike here to end September. So what does October has in store for us based also on historical trends? Now looking at more charts here after a blistering first half with the S&P 500 up around 20%. We now have a couple of months in the negative with August and September down 1.8 and 4.2% respectively. But it may not be such a bad thing no? if we consider how 2023 uh, seems to be moving in parallel with historical trends. Now in the years where August and September were down, look at how October and even the rest of the year has performed. October tends to be positive by an average of 4.5%. And for Q4, we are up an average of 7% from its September lows. We could see some good days coming for the S&P 500. And if we go back to the S&P 500 charts, let's see what the price action tells us. So the indecision candle here could mean that the markets may be looking forward to more economic numbers. Next week, we will have employment data coming in, but not until Friday with the non-farm payrolls and the unemployment data coming in. So this will give investors some breathing room at the start of the week to consolidate. But maybe if we turn on the, uh, let's turn on the 20-day average we could argue that the market may move towards mean reversion. We've been talking about mean reversion quite a few times for the S&P 500 this year as we've seen the price action move along the 20-day EMA consistently. So as the price action has moved too far away from the 20-day moving averages, we could see price action revert back to the mean or move back towards the moving average line in the next few days. Let's watch the price action on Monday and see how it moves. If we manage to take the lows here at 4,250, then we could possibly continue on to the next support level here at 4,200. But look at the previous chart here. We can see a better demand zone right here at 4,150. But if the market manages to hit the highs here at 4,300, we could potentially see the S&P 500 move towards 4,350 or 4,380. So for now, let's enjoy this rally in the PH market and we hope this rally continues. Don't chase prices. We've done some extensive shopping in the past two weeks. Can we still buy more? Look for issues that are still close to their support levels. Um, Metrobank, SMPH, Jollibee comes into mind. Maybe RLC or Manila Water. Again, let's just enjoy these moments as we say goodbye to September. We look forward to brighter months ahead. And in the meantime, that's it for this episode. If you found the information on this video useful, please like this video, subscribe to our channels for more updates. And again, good luck on your trades, manage your risk accordingly, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.